Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I would like to talk about some audible books that I've been listening to. So recently it's been the summer holidays and Matilda's been off school and so we've been visiting Dorset quite a lot which is where my parents have a house and so I've been doing the sort of two and a half three hour journey to Dorset on a bit more of a regular basis and my daughter will sit in the back and watch a film on the iPad and so I've just wanted something to listen to myself and I thought why not try some audiobooks this is a perfect chance and I've just become really really excited about audiobooks now. I've really been enjoying Audible. I find that um, one credit a month, which is what I get with the subscription that I pay for, is just about enough. Um, occasionally I buy extra ones or if I get through more than one book in a month then I have been um, using my library because my library does audible or audiobooks as well so today I just want to talk about three books that I've listened to on audible I'm going to mention their narrator and what I thought of them both as books and as audiobooks so let's get stuck in so the first book I haven't actually got a physical copy of so I'm going to show you a little picture on here if it doesn't glare you to death. Um, it is The House at the Edge of the World by Julia Rochester. I think you can just about see that. And on audio, this was narrated by Evita J. Now, she is definitely um, my favourite of all of the audio narrators so far that I've found. Obviously, um, I'm very new to this, so um, there's probably loads out there, but I really loved her style of narration. So the story of the House of the Edge of the World is about Mawina and Corwin and they turn 18 and when they turn 18, not long after, they're both twins, their father dies in a tragic accident where he falls off a cliff when he's drunk. And this a story just follows them after that occurrence, following their lives, how their lives change because of this. And also there's a mystery element involved. There's sort of a nagging feeling um, that they have about um, things. And so I won't say any more because I don't want to spoil, but this is just the story following their lives, how their lives change from this one tragic accident and everything that follows. It's just a really great adult contemporary story. I really, really enjoyed it. And the Vita J's narration really helped. She really captured the essence of a lot of the characters. She made them people within their own right, which I really enjoy. There was, you know, sometimes I worry with audiobooks that it's going to be very monotone because when I'm reading a book to myself, Myself, I sort of give the characters um, ac ca characters um, accents or personality traits in my head as I'm reading it and it's a lot easier obviously when you're reading it to distinguish the um, characters. Something that I used to find very much with audiobooks is that I would just switch off. So I would be having the audiobook on but I would be thinking about other stuff and then I'd realise I'd missed big chunks of the story or I'd get distracted and do other things because you're not actually having to hold a book up and physically sort of concentrate. And I definitely found Avita J engaging so engaging that I didn't do that. I really wanted to listen. I wanted to hear the story and I thoroughly enjoyed this. I gave the narration for this five stars and the story itself four stars. So it was a really great audible and a great narrator and a really, really good book. I would definitely recommend it. Next up was a brilliant audio and a brilliant book. I've got a physical copy here. It's Every Heart is a Doorway by Shauna Maguire and this was narrated Cynthia Hopkins. I love this story, I love this book and Cynthia Hopkins did a wonderful job of narrating this. It's the story um, and I, I just can't believe really it's only it's under 200 pages this book and it just had so much in it there was so much going on so much story it was amazing how well the author had packed in this really complex and interesting story into such a small package it's a story set in a world where um children go into these weird wonderful places you know there is a wonderland and there is an underworld and there is um I, these weird and wonderful other 
places with fairy and fae and magical folk and they often get sent back or end up coming back or come back by accident and can't find their way back and they find it very hard to assimilate back into the real world. Their parents, however, believe that there's something wrong with them. They don't believe, they feel maybe they've, you know, having a breakdown or there's something going on. And so they send them to this special boarding school, um, which is sort of for troubled teens, so to speak. Um, however, it's run by a lady who uh, understands what's going on with these children. And so we're following one girl, Nancy. She's just joined this boarding school. She meets all the people that are there. There's a murder mystery sort of plot that runs through it as well. And I just thought it was brilliant. I really, really enjoyed this. And it would be quite a hard book to narrate because there's some very quirky, interesting characters and... I just think Cynthia did a wonderful job and I really thoroughly, thoroughly recommend both this book and listening it to it on audio. And then the third and final book I want to talk about in this video is Roses and Rot by Kat Howard. Um, this is the front cover of that. And again, along a similar vein, I seem to be going along this sort of magical fairy-esque uh, route at the moment especially with audiobooks. I usually have a big problem with fairy and fae type books. I find they don't fit with me, they don't gel for some reason, but I found some really good ones this month. So Roses and Rot was uh, narrated by Madeline Maybe, and I really enjoyed her narration as well. Um, she did a great job of bringing the characters to life. It's the story of two sisters and they're both very artistic. One is a writer and one is a dancer. Uh, one of them goes away to boarding school, the elder one, and escapes their cruel mother at quite a young age. And they're coming back together now in their 20s to go to an artist's retreat together to work on their art and their craft and to both escape their tyrant of a mother. They discover at this uh, retreat that there is a relationship with the sort of fairy and the fae and it very much looks at uh, the sacrifice you make for your art and the sacrifices that you would be willing to make for the one that you love and I just thought it was a really interesting concept. It was very beautifully done, very magical in its feeling. There was some really great audio in there to evoke um feeling of atmosphere and Madeline did a wonderful job of making the characters very separate and giving them a personality. I really enjoyed this and I gave both the audio and the story itself four stars and I definitely recommend if you normally like me have a bit of trouble with fairy and fae that this might be one that you quite enjoy because there's a plot with that but you're also very much looking at um, the the people and the humans behind this and human emotions and human relationships and I really enjoyed that. So that is three audible books that I have listened to recently and their narrators and I am really really enjoying getting stuck into audible. I've got a couple more on the go. I'm currently listening to the Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry and I've also just recently downloaded Fox Low which I will be hopefully listening to both of those over the next month. I was also very kindly gifted Hatred Day by T.S. Pettibone which I own as a physical copy but I was very kindly gifted the audio version by the authors and I'm halfway through that as well and thoroughly enjoying it so I will hopefully be wrapping up three more audible books over the next coming weeks and I look forward to talking to you more about audiobooks in the future. I don't think they'll ever overtake my physical reading but I definitely think that there are on the cards for me for um, listening to a couple a month. Anyway that's it from me, let me know if you like Audible down below, can you recommend any really good narrators? Uh, let me know, let's chat in the comments and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye for now booktube!